Greetings, everyone. This is George Fenneman saying welcome to the Ray Anthony Show. Your United States Marine Corps Reserve presents that young man with a horn, Ray Anthony and his orchestra. Big band music at its best. Featuring ballads by our guest vocalists, Tommy Mercer and Peggy King. Okay, dancers, grab your partners, for Mr. Anthony is about to start the festivities. Here we go, cat dancing. Nice music, Ray. We all enjoyed your terrific rendition of Cat Dancing. We made a record of that one, George, and the folks really seemed to like it. Well, Ray, you have plenty of tunes on the All-American Jukebox, so you can be mighty proud of the boys in your band. You know, there's a word which uh, sort of seems to go hand in hand with America. That's pride. Probably the greatest things membership in the Marine Corps Reserve can offer are the intangibles. Tradition, esprit de corps, and pride. Unique to the Marine Corps and to its reserve is the feeling of pride which comes when a member puts on that famous Marine Corps uniform. The globe and anchor is a symbol respected by all Americans because it's a symbol of achievement. Only the Marine Corps Reserve can offer outstanding leadership training, a glorious tradition, and a spree de corps known and envied throughout the world. You're right, George. It's one of the world's truly outstanding military organizations. Why, Peggy King, they're mighty big words for a little girl like you. You going to sing for us? Mm Mm-hmm. A lovely tune called Young and Foolish. Okay, Maestro Ray, if you'll just give Peg some big band backing, we're off. Soon enough, the bluebird has 
Wonderful, Peggy. She has a nice song, isn't it? Young and Foolish. I have a feeling it's going to be around for many years to come. I think it's great. Well, certainly great the way you sing it, Peggy. Just keep singing those songs like you do, and you're bound to keep a lot of people smiling. Well, I'd smile if Ray Anthony would give with some of that terrific music of his. You heard the girl, Ray. What's a good word? Well, we're going to dress up for this one. Uh, Blue jeans. Wonderful, Ray. Ray Anthony and the orchestra are doing blue jeans. You know, when we mention the fine things done by the members of your hometown Marine Corps Reserve Unit, we certainly don't mean to overlook those folks who stand faithfully behind the Marines in all their activities, the parents and wives of the reservists. These families realize that a free America must be a strong America. 
They know that the same men who are taking part in this important program are helping build the strength we need, the kind of strength that keeps aggressors in their place. Yes, the Marine Corps Reserve is a vitally important organization. The program needs your support. So let's give credit where credit is due to all the parents, wives, teachers, and all the rest working in complete harmony with the men who help guard our freedom, the United States Marine Corps Reserve. And I'd like to second the motion. Well, thank you. Right now, Ray, I think it's time Tommy Mercer joined forces with you for one of his fine vocals. Agreed? Sure. Tommy's going to do one titled, I Know Why. Boys? Thank you, Tommy. We all enjoyed your very fine song, I Know Why. Much as we hate to admit it, that's just about all for now. We'll all be back with more fine music and, of course, more songs by our guest vocalists, Tommy Mercer and Pretty Peggy King. Meanwhile, young men, if you're between the ages of 17 and 32, learn about the many advantages of serving your country in your own hometown. This is George Fenneman saying, remember, for a free America, support your hometown unit of the United States Marine Corps Reserve.
Greetings, everyone. This is George Fenneman saying welcome to the Ray Anthony Show. Your United States Marine Corps Reserve presents that young man with a horn, Ray Anthony and his orchestra. Big band music at its best. Featuring ballads by our guest vocalists, Tommy Mercer and Peggy King. And now, our man with the band gets the show off to a fast start with Midnight Curfew. terrific, Ray. A true Anthony arrangement of Midnight Curfew. You know, you always make a song pay off, which reminds me about the extra pay members of the Marine Corps Reserve receive. Did you know they get a full day's pay for each two-hour period of reserve activity? Young men, you can earn this extra money right in your own hometown. Earn up to $704 a year with your reserve unit, yet keep right on with your regular job. This money sure comes in handy when those doctor bills pile up. Or when the wife wants a new dress. Or when the old family jalopy needs a new set of tires. Remember, in your Marine Corps Reserve, you get wonderful training. You pile up reserve retirement credit points. And with all this, you pick up that extra pay. Believe me, that quarterly check looks mighty good when the mailman totes it up to your door. And now, Tommy Mercer, you're due for a song, right? You bet, George. And I'd like to fill a request this time. Some folks have asked me to sing the Surrey with the Fringe on Top. Chicks and ducks and geese better scurry When I take you out in the Surrey When I take you out in the Surrey With the Fringe on Top Watch that fringe and see how it flutters When I drive them high step and strutters Nosy pokes will peek through their shutters And their eyes will pop The wheels are 
by yellow, the upholstery's brown, the dashboard's genuine leather. With eyes and glass curtains, you can roll right down in case there's a change in the weather. Bright side lights winking and blinking, ain't no finer rig I'm a thinking. You can keep your rig if you're thinking that I'd care to swap for that shiny little surrey with a fringe on the top. When I take you all tonight with me Honey, here's the way it's gonna be You will sit behind the team of snow White horses in that slickest gig you'll ever see. All the world will fly in a flurry when I take you out in the Surrey. When I take you out in the Surrey with a fringe on top. When we hit that road bent for leather, cats and dogs will dance in the heather, birds and frogs will sing all together, and the toads will hop. The wind will whistle as we rattle along, the cows will moo in the clover, the river will ripple out a whispered song, and whispered over. Over. Don't you wish to go on forever? Don't you wish to go on forever? Don't you wish to go on forever and it never stops? In that shiny little surrey with a fringe on the Fine vocal job, Tommy, with fine backing by the Ray Anthony Band. For listening, dancing, or dreaming, you can't beat the big bands. I certainly go along with that, George. And when it comes to singing, it's sure great to have a group of musicians as fine as Ray's helping you along. And how about a little of that help right now, as Peggy King does another of her wonderful jobs with Wait Till You See Him. Peggy? That was a special sort of number, George, for a very special group of fellows. The men of the United States Marine Corps Reserve. 
alert young men who can measure up to the high physical and mental standards of the Marine Corps, one of the world's truly outstanding military organizations. The Marine Corps and its reserve selects the men because the Corps has a tradition of volunteer service, service by men who want to share the companionship, the esprit de corps, and devotion to duty which have welded the Marine Corps into a hard-hitting land, sea, and air team. So, young men, select the service that selects its men. Join your hometown Marine Corps Reserve Unit. Stay on your job or in school, but be a Marine, too. And now, Ray, how about ringing down the curtain with an Anthony special? Okay. Here we go with Campus Rumpus. <laughs> That's the clincher for this time. Ray Anthony and his orchestra with a tremendous example of big band music at its best. We've had a lot of fun bringing you this wonderful band with vocals by Tommy Mercer and Pretty Peggy King. There's no doubt about it. This Ray Anthony crew that Young America has voted tops fully deserves its ranking. Thanks, Ray, Tommy, Peggy, and all the men in the band. And before we go into the closing theme, young men, if you're between the ages of 17 and 32... Learn about the advantages of serving your country in your own hometown. This is George Fetterman saying, remember, for a free America, support your hometown unit of the United States Marine Corps Reserve.
foolish to suffer with an ordinary headache when Bromo Seltzer gives you such fast, pleasant, three-way relief. It's true, Mr. Wheat. Bromo Seltzer is so pleasant to take, and it works so fast to help your headache all three ways. Yes, Bromo Seltzer speedily fights the headache pain itself. Then it goes right to work to soothe the upset stomach and jangled nerves that often may team up with a headache. Try it next time you get a headache. Prove to yourself just how fast it works to help your headache all three ways. We've tried a lot of headache products, but it's Bromo Seltzer from now on for our family. You'll say the same thing, too, once you've discovered Bromo Seltzer. So get a bottle today and be prepared at all times to fight a headache fast all three ways. It's smart to keep Bromo Seltzer both at home and at your place of business. That's right, folks. Remember, Bromo Seltzer gives you fast three-way help for a headache. It's on sale at all drugstores. Caution, use only as directed. If headaches recur or persist, see your doctor. Get Bromo Seltzer today and... I get Time. You're listening to the National Edgar Allan Poe Theater on the Air. Sponsored in part by Baltimore's own Raven Beer, this ongoing series brings to your ears the best known works from America's revered grandfather of horror and suspense. In today's episode, the National Edgar Allan Poe Theater on the Air takes on one of Poe's most famous stories of madness and mayhem, the Telltale Heart. As the daylight dims and shadows cast long on the streets ahead, we find ourselves converging on a somber, isolated place, hosting a checkered collection of guests. Who is it? Oh, how very good to see you. Your visit has been most enthusiastically anticipated at the agreed-upon time, too. I admire punctuality. It's a noble and morally clean quality. Welcome to the asylum. Please, enter freely. I am so glad you found us. The streets are dark on a winter's evening, even if it is the best time to visit us. Quiet, tranquil, few distractions on the way here. Uh, Come with me down this corridor. I must say, I am delighted to have the opportunity to show you my system, my revolutionary system, to change the way we treat and, most importantly, cure the mentally crippled. For I believe in hope, and there's no case beyond hope, no lunatic beyond cure. I have many inmates here, inmates abandoned by all other institutions, and I have taken them in. I believe I can cure them one and all. (laughs) I see you're perplexed. You want to know my secret? all in good time. But what I will reveal immediately is that I regard them all as my children, whether they've lost their way, like little lost souls. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I think it's best for you to meet some of my children. Here, cell number one. This patient is most polite. Quite enchanting is one of my favorite children. I could spend hours in her company. In fact, I have done. She is blessed with the highest levels of sensitivity. For her own part, she regards it as a curse. A curse. A lady so attuned to her surroundings has so much potential. I'm confident that my system will cure her. Cleanse her. (laughs) Yes. Excuse my laughter. You see, this patient is very clean and proper, but afflicted, diseased almost with nerves. And that is the impetus to her tragic tale. But you will find her most eloquent. I will let her tell you her tale herself in her own delightful voice. Let's enter. Good evening, my dear. Oh, Dr. Mallard, I am quite unprepared. I have not had time to clean my room. Please, don't worry yourself. If only some of the other guests were as sanitary as you, my dear. The other rooms could do with a clean. Oh, I would be delighted to clean their rooms. I will find a spirit of springtime healthiness to infuse the whole house. And I would so like to meet other people, your other guests. Uh, There's the rub. Yes, I forgot. Forgive me, I am not to meet the other guests. I'm afraid it would not be a good idea. Dr. Mallard has made it clear that my sensitivity is the root of my nervousness, and my nervousness is the cause of 
Am I permitted to speak freely? Have no concern, my dear. You can trust our friend here. Tell your tale. You must forgive me my nervousness. I assure you that's all that afflicts me, nerves. I promise you I am not... I am not mad. You have no reason to think that I am mad. It's just a disease that has made me nervous. It has heightened my senses. Above all, my sense of hearing is most acute. And yet you still look at me askance. Wait until I tell you the whole story. I shall tell you calmly and healthily. You see, I loved the old man. Hello. Good morning, sir. I have come about the vacant situation. Ah, perfect. Please, come in. A cleaner and companion to a mature, distinguished gentleman. I may have put modesty aside in my description. I am indeed mature, and I would like to consider myself distinguished. I do hope you are not disappointed. Not at all, sir. I couldn't be happier at the prospect. Very good. I am overjoyed. I see you stare at me. No, let me apologize. Just my nervous disposition. I did not mean... Is it my eye? I have no vision in one of my eyes. An accident long ago. A childhood misdemeanor. It is nothing. A little unsightly, that is all. Unsightly. Hard to look through and to look at. (laughs) Bless you, sir. Do you wish to leave? Not at all, sir. Very good. Welcome to my home. A modest place, a lonely place, and I struggle to attend to the household tasks. You need not vex yourself any more, sir. I will be a rock to you. And there are dangers. Dangers, sir? Robbers. Uh, My house may be humble, but I have certain possessions, mainly of sentimental value, that might nonetheless appeal to robbers. And I fear violence. I am a man of gentle sentiment, and the stories one hears of people accosted in their own homes, assaulted in their own beds, unable to defend themselves, it fills me with horror. Then I shall protect you, sir. An angel descended from the heaven. Oh, sir, you shall make me blush. If you hear, no one will harm me. And you'll live here, and I will provide all you might need. And in return, you will help to keep me safe and the place in order. Fortunes be blessed. And you have started already. This will work out very well for the both of us. Indeed it will. Cleanliness is next to godliness. The place was filthy. Suitable only for farmyard swine. No, no, don't get me wrong. I loved the old man. He wasn't a pig, just the place. A grimy, dirty mess. It took days to get the place spotless, but I did it. The house sparkled. But still, something bothered me. Good evening, sir. Your dinner is served. This is extraordinary. You have cooked me a meal fit for a king, and my home is so clean. Everything glistens and shines like treasure. I barely recognize it. I am fed and housed like a monarch. My humble home is transformed into a palace, all thanks to your incredible labors. It was a pleasure, sir. Besides, I had no choice. I am in your employ, and and it has to be done. May I give you some wine, sir? Yes, please. Oh, it is wonderful. Please, why don't you sit down with me? Share my repast. It looks delicious. Your labors are done. We can engage in conversation. I would, but alas, I feel my work is not yet done. Goodness, your work must be complete. Please, sit down, and we can eat together, or at least have some wine. There is an odor. A stench. A rank and rotten smell. Really? Uh, I cannot smell a thing. Just a sweet fragrance of cleanliness. Not to my nose. So I shall keep cleaning. And cleaning, and cleaning, and cleaning. An angel of the house. Your dinner is getting cold. You might use the knife and fork correctly? More lightly upon the plate. Hmm, I'm sorry. Don't cut onto the plate so hard. (laughs) You will scratch off the glaze, and they are such pretty plates. Yes, they are. They have been in my family for an age. My mother was so very fond of them. Gently, gently does Mm, it. Delicious. Oh, exquisite food. Mm, You mm, have a napkin. mm. There is a napkin beside your plate. Yes. Use it. It is there for you to wipe your mouth. Very well. 
Is that better? Yes. Mm, delicious. It might be best to close your mouth when you eat. Forgive me. And I realized that the problem was not the house, but the old man. I loved him. You must believe me when I say it. I did love the old man, but the stench that infused the house and could never be cleaned was him. The food that slobbered down his chin in clumps, half-chewed and saliva-strewn, he couldn't imbibe without the drink trailing down his chin from the corner of his twisted mouth. And the noises he made breathing in hideous rattling loops like the raking, railing breaths of a dying man. A dying man. A dying man. Then I realized that if the house was to be clean, properly clean, I would need to do something with the man. He was the contagion, the stench, the frightful mess. I looked at him and assessed his faults. The white hair, thin like wisps over his peeling scalp. The wrinkled, flaking skin. The bumps, pustules, and moles. But I tell you truly, I loved the old man. All of his faults I could live with, but not the eye. I, the eye, it was like the eye of a vulture. Dull blue with a hideous veil over it that disgusted me. It chilled the very marrow in my bones as it swiveled and seemed to watch me, although I I knew it was useless, it could see nothing. When it looked at me, my blood ran cold. The evil eye, I can see it yet. And so I set about my plan to clean the house once and for all. To make it truly pristine, I would need to dispose of the old man. And you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded, with what caution, with what care I set about my work. I was never kinder to the old man than when I had decided on my course of action. Although every screech of knife on plate, every smashing door, every creaking step, the old man set my nerves on edge and made me want to sob my heart out. My nerves shuddered and shattered inside me, but I merely went about my tasks without a word. I cooked and cleaned and even wiped the old man's face with the neglected napkin myself. And I just smiled and smiled, but bit my lip until it bled. I could taste blood as I catered and cleaned for the old man. And every night, when I fancied him to be asleep, I would take a cleaver from the kitchen and I would creep up the staircase with a lantern to the closed door of his bedchamber. Pressing my ear to the door, I could hear the ticking of a clock. The nauseating, rhythmic rattle of his snoring. And I would grasp the handle and open the door slowly, slowly, slowly. And I would lean my head into the room and open the lantern so it cast a beam upon his face. And I did this ritual every night until... Who's there? Who is it? What do you want? Please, please! beam of lantern light like a thin thread of spider web Help. falls Where upon the evil what? eye. Help. The vulture Help. eye is awake. It sees me. Please, please, I implore you. It is you. now the time to act. It's you. It's you. But why in heaven? <laughs> oh, the noise. Peace at last. It's over. What is that sound? Nothing. Nothing. I am a lady of great sensitivity, that's all. But a lady's work is never done. Time to dispose of this blight upon the house. I dragged the corpse into a metal tub. First of all, the head. Then, the limbs. Beneath the floorboards, you shall go. (laughs) I cannot believe my eyes. There's nothing to wash out. No stain of any kind, no blood whatever. 
I have been too wary for that. The tub had caught all, every drop of him. <laughs> and that can be disposed of down the drain. And I enjoyed my tranquility. I am a lady of heightened sensitivity, so you can imagine how I appreciated no mess, no noise. No mess, no noise. Immaculate floors and furniture, doors closing quietly, silent eating off of unscratched plates. I imagined that the house itself took me to its bosom and said, thank you. But this only lasted a few hours when... Hello. Good afternoon, madam. A policeman? Whatever has happened? Nothing to worry about, madam. Are you proprietor of this house? Yes. No. The owner is abroad. He will return presently, although I am not sure when. A long vacation. May I come in? Of course. Please, wipe your feet. Wipe your feet. Has there been any disturbance, madam? No. Why do you say that? Your neighbors have reported here in screams last night. Screams? Why would they say such a thing? Repeated screams, both male and female, after midnight. They feared it was a robbery. A robbery? Such nonsense. Please, come in and inspect for yourself. See every room. Thank you, madam. And I showed him every room, everything clean and proper. The bedchambers beamed with sunlight and were fragrant with fresh air. No mud on the staircase or clumps of dust in the corner of the room. You could inspect beneath the rugs and find no filth. I showed him everything in the kitchen, too. I ensured he looked at his reflection in the knives, spoons, and the cleaver. He admired the unscratched surface of the old man's precious plates. I was proud of my work. Well, evidently, everything is in perfect order. The initial suspicions I detected in the policeman had by now evaporated. I enjoyed my role. I was playing to the balcony. I was so confident, I made him sit in a chair above the body of the old man. Are you sure the gentleman who owns the house did not say when he would return? No, a long vacation. A long, much-deserved vacation. And you really have no idea where he went? Oh, uh, no. Places... Places. Is he family? Uh, no, family, alone in the world. Friends and old acquaintances? Maybe, friends, places new. Uh, did he pack many belongings? No, no. Are you all right, madam? Yes, I love the old man. I miss him. Never a kinder word from him. The way he liked his dinner, cutting upon the plate full of smiles, despite the eye. Not his fault, a childhood injury, and he is old, but... But the vulture eye must have been blind, but it seemed to stare so, stared me and stalk me around the room, and I do hope he is enjoying his much-deserved and welcome vacation, old friends and places new. I will embrace him and kiss him when he returns, as I miss him so. Did I not tell you that I love the old man? But why do you stare upon me so? Why do you smile? I know you can hear it. I know you can hear it! hear what you say? I am no fool. Do not humor me. Do not pretend. I'm a better thespian than you, dear policeman. I know you can hear it. You villain. Very well, I admit the deed. Tear up the planks. Here, here, it is the beating of the old man's hideous heart. And there we have the dear lady's tale. I am no fool. Very sad, very tragic. I hear it But not still. beyond hope. I am a lady of heightened sensitivity. My system sensitivity. will cure her, and but she will return to sharing company. Such is my confidence. Don't humor me. Imagine her. Don't pretend. This sensitive lady. I know you can hear it. A veritable angel of the house. The beating of the old man's heart. Uh, yes, I think that's our cue to depart. Early days in her cure. If only we could transfer her sensitivity and cleanliness to her moral compass. Lots of cleaning and proper conduct, but seeing less faults in others. And no murder, obviously. We cannot risk her meeting the other residents. It would be pandemonium. She sees the shortcomings in others when she should find the goodness in all things. We will find a moral tolerance in her by keeping her alone in darkness and silence. And she must realize there is no heartbeat. I mean, there isn't, is there? You didn't hear a heartbeat, did you? Of course you didn't. Did you? No, no, I merely just. That would be deranged. And then you'd be in here alongside her. Yeah? 
Good idea, let's move on. You want to meet another one of my children? It's only a few steps to my next challenging case. And next time, wipe your boots before you come in here! You've been listening to the National Edgar Allan Poe Theater on the Air and our production of The Telltale Heart, adapted for radio by Richard J. Hand. The Telltale Heart was directed by J.D. Brock and produced by Greg Martin with the voices of Alex Avistovich, Brian McDonald, and Jennifer Restack. The National Edgar Allan Poe Theater on the Air is sponsored in part by Baltimore's own Raven Beer, purveyors of Poe-inspired craft beer. More information can be found on the web at www.ravenbeer.com. More information on the National Edgar Allan Poe Theater on the Air can be found at www.poetheater.org. Until next time, this is Alex Zavistovich reminding you that all that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream.